the first thing I'd like to do today is build a scarecrow in the farm area right here. And the reason for that is because I'm just really bored standing here scaring all the crows off myself. <laughs> but also, I just think getting into some more decorational stuff might be good. I've been delaying getting into a lot of the decorational stuff until we move towns. And then I'm going to upgrade the houses and do a lot more, you know, decoration and town planning and stuff like that. But I don't want to do that with literally everything. So if we go to decorations down here, we can see that this is currently locked, but we can buy it for just 50 coins. So that's the first thing we want to do. And then it needs a few resources, of which we have most. But we need to go into town and buy some of the linen thread and also a linen fabric too. So that's going to be the first port of call, and then we can actually build the scarecrow. It's hard to tell what time of day it is because it's raining, even though it's summer right now. I think I mentioned in the previous episode, but basically like a British summer where it's raining the whole way through. So uh, I might head there in a bit. Oh, actually, no, I always forget there is time in this game on the map. So time right now, 8.27. Uh, I'm not sure what time the trade is open, but we'll wait till about 9 and we'll head in. In the meantime, I'll just go and collect some manure and stuff like that. Let's see, actually, do we have any goose uh, drops just yet? Not yet. Okay, I'll get on with that and then we'll see how much we can... Uh, buy the thread for and build our scarecrow so we now have enough resources to make up the scarecrow the only question left is where do we want him to go unfortunately you can't place it directly in the field like this it has to be off to the side so maybe somewhere here where it's near the barn would be a good little spot for him yeah there we go that looks pretty cool so there we go he's looking over our crops wait did i place this the wrong way oh damn he's actually just facing the barn <laughs> um let's try and change that okay so let's get our hammer out go to destroy wait if this is all slightly red you know what? i've got a save real like recent i'll just test this but I just want to destroy just this. Yeah, okay. I was <laughs> like, it's all like highlighted. That doesn't sound good. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Um, so actually, we put this uh, hammer back onto build mode just so we're not destroying anything else. And I assume I now don't have the resources, right? Because uh, you lose resources. Oh, damn. We need to buy another linen thread and fabric and everything. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, well, sorry my life, guys. <laughs> let's go and buy this stuff again. And this time, I'll make sure I place him facing the right way. I should mention that under the uh, skills tab right here, if we go to this tab here, production, uh, if we get, let's see, it's uh, handyman, is it? No. Uh, let's see. If we go down to master of destruction, had we uh, leveled that up, then we'd have got 50% of the resources back from when we destroyed that scarecrow just then and any other build and it's been on my mind that i know i need to do that especially when i move the town but i didn't think to do it just for the scarecrow anyway back at the market we speak to this guy right here and he sells the stuff that we need so let's actually just scroll down like this there's quite a lot of stuff so you can see here if we buy one of the linen fabrics very good and we buy one linen thread too in total it's 58 and a half coins obviously i've just spent that twice because i'm a muppet <laughs> but uh Hey, there we go. So now we'll go and build that scarecrow again, uh, but facing the correct way. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this once again. And what I think I'll do, actually, let's scroll out so I can get a bit of a better view of this. I find sometimes building like this, you just get to see things a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So let's see, which way does he need to be facing? Okay, pretty sure that's correct. Let's place him down there. There we go. And yeah, so the back of the hat's there. The front is here. This is the head. Okay, we're good. So uh, yeah, there we go. We can we can call this Russell Crow, <laughs> Russell the Scarecrow. And uh, it'd be nice, actually, if by doing this, it, like, improved farm yield or something. But I believe this is purely aesthetical. But that's fine. You know, it's not a bad thing. And, uh, yeah, just makes the farm look a little nicer. Talking of farming, I'm going to get on with doing a load of farming now. We've got all of this wheat here to uh, harvest up, which would be pretty good. We also have, oops, if I can run in the right direction, just up here is all of our flax. A big flax field to harvest, too. Usually, I do this stuff during the night. But, honestly, with the rain like this, it's probably not the best visuals on screen for you guys anyway right now. So I'm just going to get on with it and then we'll look at the harvest after that's done. We've now managed to get ourselves a sunny day in the summer, so that's kind of nice. And as you can see here, all the harvesting is done here, apart from obviously these crops, which aren't ready yet. And up at the big farm back here, the big flax farm, we harvested all that too. And even managed to get a mining trip done there in the night. So quite a productive time while I was off cam. Obviously, I had the nighttime and the rainy day, so that really helped. Now, in terms of what we got with the harvest, if we go into our chest right here, over a thousand flax, guys, which technically has a value there of 5,000. We can, of course, sell that for about half of that. So we're doing really well for money now. That flax is awesome. Now, obviously, we're going to turn that into other things like linen, which will sell for even more. But yeah, that in itself is still awesome. And then down here, we've got 600 wheat, which, you know, technically, again, another three grand in value. So 1,500 if we sell it. But we can turn that into other stuff, too. So I'm really happy with that. And I was thinking, I want to get something back in the ground and make the most of the farm here. So we're going to fertilize this area right here and fill it with cabbage. The reason we're going for cabbage is, I believe, if I uh, open up my bag here, that it is the only thing we can plant during the summer. So the cabbage is just around here somewhere. There we go. Plants in summer and harvest in autumn. Whereas nothing else, if we go around the circle here, will actually be planted in the summertime. So we just as well do that. 
that. Now, looking in here, I believe, yes, we've got 63 cabbage seeds. So that's awesome. We've got 66 fertilizers, so that works out really well. That fertilizer, by the way, we haven't paid anything for. That is all from rot and manure. So this is the start of the game now where we can start to really get a lot more money out of farming because we're not having to buy the materials. We're just farming and refarming, so things are going to take off. As always, I will do the fertilizing, hoeing, and planting uh, off camera so you guys uh, don't have to see the boring bits. But uh, just letting you know where we're at and keeping you going through the series. In a lot of the previous episodes, it's been a case of I've done like updates. Pretty much like every video is like a season or two long. But we might have to do uh, a few uh, seasons now per video sometimes just to get through to new things. So yeah, we'll see how we go with that. I might even do some live streams and stuff like that in the future. Uh, but again, we'll see on that one. Anyway, just keeping you sort of up to date with the series plan. Let's go and get all this stuff in the ground. Now, we have a super chat here from Durham Rustfinder 2901 So, Durham, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, the 4 dollars right there, great British pounds. Always love to see it. <laughs> so, thank you immensely. Um, and his wife uh, came up with a donkey joke that I had to share with you guys. What do you call a donkey with three legs? A wonky. <laughs> that is, uh, as you can probably tell from previous uh, videos, definitely my sense of humor. Just those terrible jokes. But thank you so much for the support. And of course, everybody who has done all the super chats and things. And actually, the support in this series, uh, not just super chat, obviously, they're very appreciated, as are all my channel members and patrons and stuff. But even just you guys for watching and stuff, all that support actually made, meant that I could uh, basically pay for my ticket to go to the zoo, which I did yesterday. And I had a really amazing time. So thank you all so, so much for that wonderful experience. That's basically on you guys. So uh, yeah, just wanted to show my appreciation and thank you all. Now we have all the cabbage uh, has been planted here. And something I haven't been using is this, the compost bin. And I've had several comments about this, about how I do need to start using it. So if we open up the compost bin, I want to see what different things we can actually put in. Um, so for example, can I put roasted meat into it? It looks like I can. So I guess anything that can rot will go in here and turn into rot. Um, we might eat a bit more of that instead of 62%, but as it gets lower, I'll put it in. It was more just a test to see if it could go in. And a lot of people have been saying as well that the cabbage, once that has been made, that's a really good thing to chuck in there, which I think is a great idea. We'll perhaps eat some, maybe use some to make some potage, and the rest of it can go in the compost bin. A very important uh, farming tool, I guess you could call it, and uh, something I haven't really been using. So thank you for all the comments, and we'll definitely get on with using that. So a big thank you to Fortune Leaf and Nanny Oggins, who uh, gave me the comments there about the uh, the compost bin. And also thank you to GY2045, Adalurk, and Sager, if I'm saying that right. I think those are the three who commented about all the uh, cabbage going in there. Great ideas for sure. And if memory serves, New Zealand Park, I might have mentioned that as well. But uh, we're getting quite a lot of comments, which is fantastic. I am trying to keep on top of mentioning everybody because I do really appreciate them. But apologies if I ever do miss someone. Now, another thing I wanted to do was a suggestion from Alan Cook. Uh, we do have a few geese here right now. So let's go to our animals. And we want to find one of our gooses. This could be this dude right here. And let's rename him. And this goose is going to be renamed to Maverick. Because <laughs> it was a great suggestion from Alan Cook. And it's too funny not to do that. So thank you for the suggestion. And we've named the goose Maverick. I've talked a bit about how my long-term plan is to move the town from its current location to a different location. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe I found that perfect location. Now, yes, I'm looking at a waterfall. And no, I'm not saying that the aesthetic of this area is the sole reason that I'm choosing it. But I'll be honest, it is a large part of it because this area is absolutely beautiful. We have a bridge going across this river right here. And I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying we can't make bridges in this game. So to have one here that we can utilize for our town is really cool. We can essentially build both sides of this river with a waterfall down there. And it looks absolutely amazing. On top of that, you may have noticed that just over here, it is, well, two things. A, incredibly flat. And B, there are plenty of trees around, which is always a good thing. Now, on top of that, if we come over here, you've probably already seen this, but we do indeed have a cave over here. Now, I haven't gone inside this cave yet, to be honest, so whether or not it's it's a big cave or not, it remains to be seen. I wanted to live near a cave, though, and what I'm thinking is this is just such a perfect spot because with the cave here, outside it, we've got enough going on here, uh, enough space going on here, I should say, that we can actually build some stuff here and make like a little mining encampment right here, that will go over the bridge to the main town area and then maybe have some fishing and stuff going on along the river. Looks like we got like a deer spot just up here as well. I really think this is such a great location and hopefully you guys agree because this is where I'm going to plan on moving the town to. Now, if I open this up on the map, I'll show you guys exactly where we are. So we are down here just like this, as you can see. There's the, the waterfall roughly up in that way and obviously the bridge is there. And then we've got all this area here, which is like pretty flat, lots of trees, as you can see. So I just want to make sure you guys can see on the map right there, that's where I am. 
And if I zoom in, it's there. Because I know that some people are, are curious to make sure they know where things are happening. And I totally get that. I would be the same if I was watching a series like this. So uh, I'm going to try to always remember to do that. Uh, but yeah, this is this is it. And it's actually good to have a nice look around here. See everything as it is right now. There's a little camp up there that we can loot. Actually, we'll check that out. But uh, then we can use this for future reference. In fact, what I'll do... Let's go over here, we'll loot this, and then I'll get to a spot where I can get some better photos. Perhaps we'll go up on top of the uh, waterfall as well. Now, loot. What have we got here? Abandoned supplies. Oh, wow, rye bread. Look at that. That's uh, pretty cool. I think that's a new one for us. So some apples here too. I mean, any food is, is always good. That's that bundle taken care of. Uh, what else have we got here? Sticks. I'm not too worried about sticks. Oh, there's a bow. Hold on, let's grab that. 36%. Well, that's not too bad. It's got some life left in it just yet. Uh, a little poisoned arrows here too. We'll take those. Take the stone axe, take the bronze knife, absolutely. Uh, a beer bottle, why not? And is there anything else? Yes, there is. These abandoned supplies right here. And 21 coins. Uh, you know, it's not going to uh, get us too much, but it's better than nothing. So, yeah, there we go. We've got some good loot here. Another stone axe right there. I've always got to be careful because I always miss things when I'm looting, but uh, it can be a little tricky to see everything. Turns out we have another abandoned camp area just over here as well. So let's have an explore of this while we're here. Got a small bundle there, a bit of salted meat. Okay, very good. Uh, what else do we have here? Anything? We've got a small container. It has 69 coins <laughs> and a cabbage. There we go. Uh, some other stuff going on here. Some apple wine. I mean, look, this is all going to be useful. We'll all use it for stuff or we'll sell it or whatever. So uh, it's all it's all helpful. And uh, I was hoping to find like a golden ring or something like I did in the other place at the start of the season, but uh, wasn't to be. So I think we can run up this hillside just here. Looks like we can just about. Yes, indeed. And we'll go and get on top of this waterfall and see what's going on up here. Okay, I'm now even more convinced because from this angle, it looks even more beautiful. You can see we've got a smaller waterfall just there running down here to the bigger waterfall. And uh, if we look from up here, it really is a fantastic spot, isn't it? In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, because I've been exploring, it's, it's not the best time of day to be showing you guys this. I will get some better photos and, and some better footage of this when it's sunny. So perhaps we'll come back and do that later on. But this will be the new spot for the new town. It's now the following morning and Claude and I have ridden down here towards the area where the new town is going to be. If we open up the map right now, uh, you can see right here that we're, we're in the general vicinity. And what I think I want to do is start by building a resource storage somewhere nearby. Then we can start clearing some trees and stuff like that. This town is going to be very different to the other town that I built. Uh, one of the biggest differences with this one is that we're going to plan out a lot better uh, before we start building and probably take a little while to like move everything down here. We're not in a, in a rush to get things built here. We still have our other town, which we're going to be working on too. Uh, but this is just like a, so a bit of a side project, but a big project and something I might do on live streams too. Now, I believe that I recently uh, unlocked the better storage building. So if we go to storages right here, uh, we have got the resource storage two that has been, uh, oh, it's not quite unlocked. Okay, 960, or we're close to unlocking it. Uh, so a few more buildings, we unlock that. I think that's the one I want to start building here. So what I might do for now is what I came here to do, which is just start clearing a load of uh, areas and maybe sort of like plan where I want to build the resource storage. Getting it right is a little tricky because it's probably going to need to move at some point anyway. What I think I want to do for now is maybe build it like here and we can start building the main area of the town over on this side in and around here. So that way the resource storage will be near enough, but it's not going to be in the way of any of our plans. Then later on when we want to move it, then it's not too far to go from there over to there. So that's my general plan. What I'm going to do now is just pick up resources in the area to use for building this and uh, basically get started. As you can see, we have now unlocked the resource storage building. I got the rest of the points that I needed up by chopping down a lot of trees in the area. Now I have remembered from previous uh, episodes or tips on previous episodes, I should say, not to take the stumps up because we don't know where those trees might want to regrow yet. So there's gonna be a lot of stumps around here at the moment. And that's going to just be spaces where those trees can regrow if we want to go down that route. So now we can go ahead and place down the resource storage number two. So this is going to be a bigger resource storage area. And let's see, I reckon maybe just like that is going to be a really nice spot for it. So it's going to take up a big spot right here. And we're going to you know, have it on the main road, which is nice. Here's all the logs by the way from the trees I cut down. I've got a load of sticks here too. But all that's going to be helpful in this build process. And we're going to go now and pick up a load of stones and reeds in the area. And then we'll do a time lapse of this build because we haven't built one of these yet on this series. So I think that could be good. And actually, judging by the weather, then we might have to start that tomorrow morning. But either way, that's the next thing you guys are going to see. I accidentally told a lie, guys. The next thing you were meant to see was going to be the resource storage. We slept through to a new season and we have our sun. <laughs> so that is fantastic. And uh, now we have to choose a name for the sun. And as you can see here, there are a ton of different names that we can have. 
So let's have a little look through and see if there's any good ones. Now, as this son is going to be a Christmas baby, I thought Rudolph was a very fitting name. It's the 23rd of December at the time of recording. And so as soon as I saw this, I was like, yeah, we're going to go with Rudolph. Now, you do get a little animation of uh, your son not being born. That would be weird in a video game, but of the, the sort of achievement stuff of getting an heir. And I was trying to uh, get my recording started and I accidentally pressed escape and quit it. So normally you get to see that before this. What I'm going to do now is save the game once I've got Rudolph in. So let's actually do that. So choose the name. And uh, in fact, maybe we can meet him. But I'll show you guys the animation because I think it's kind of nice. And there's only a few of them in the game. Here he is, guys. Little baby Rudolph. Look at the hat. There he is. Tiny little baby. And I guess she now has a couple of years off work. I think that's what happens. Uh, we can talk to Bogner. I don't think we can interact with Rudolph just yet. <laughs> and here he is. He is listed as being part of the town. He's only 1% happy right now. To be fair, he has just been born. Um, interestingly enough, his skill level is like on par, if not better, than a lot of the adults in this town, despite the notable handicap of being zero years old. <laughs> so, I mean, either this guy is going to be a super duper worker when he's older, or uh, that's just obviously how the game does it. So, yeah. Anyway, let me show you guys that animation because I'm sure it'll be cool. Oh, wait, oh, sorry. Before I do that, we've got a cradle. Look at that. So we got our double bed over here still. And now there's a cradle in here. This is a new thing. That's so, so cool. Um, so I'm sorry. Probably a lot of you guys already know about this, but this is the first time I've got to this stage, and it's really awesome. Now, out the window, we're seeing all new things there to go and look at, which we're going to do in just a second. But let me go ahead and play you that animation once I've saved here, so I come back in at this point. Okay, my apologies, guys. I just had a look. The also save, the closest one I have is actually 20 minutes ago, and I'm a little bit pushed for time getting this episode out today. So I'm, I'm not going to go through that animation but you know what, it'll be a surprise for you guys when you do it yourselves. Uh, do forgive me on that one. But let's have a little look at what's going on here. We've got all of these uh, cabbages now that are ready to be collected. We talked earlier as well how we can turn those uh, into rot in the compost bin if we wish. And if we open up the compost bin, we see there's some stuff has started rotting. So my belief is that when you put stuff in in one season, it will turn to rot in the next season. On top of that, the oats are now ready to be harvested. A good time because you can see the top left there. We do need some animal feed. And the one ingredient we're short on is the oat grain. Well, not any longer. Well, we are, I suppose, technically, but once we harvest all this, we won't be. Now, some of the bigger questions. Did the pigs breed? Let's have a look. Oh, they didn't. They didn't. No. Yeah. That's not a little baby being crushed underneath. That's his back foot. Yeah. Okay. No, no pigs breeding. Um, We do have a male and a female. I guess it's a matter of time, but it's not happened just yet. All good. We've got to be patient with these things. I understand that. The donkeys already did their breeding. It was actually uh, suggested we could build a new donkey hut. So shout out to Obsidian Oak for the comment about that. And uh, basically, it's not a bad idea. You build another hut, you keep moving the foals into the new hut, and then these donkeys will keep breeding, and then you can sell the foals on or something like that. Maybe something we'll look to get into more at our uh, new town once we move there, um, or in the future at some point we'll look to do that, I'm sure. Uh, as for in here, looks like uh, we don't have any new geeses <laughs> either. So, yeah, they're being a bit finicky when it comes to the breeding. To be fair, I'm not being able to feed them at all times, and that might be playing an impact, uh, having an impact, I should say. Anyway, what we'll do now, we will do the time lapse. Actually, yeah, no, we will. Okay, so we'll do the time lapse of the resource storage, then I'll come back and harvest the farms and get the animal feed going and all that sort of stuff. So let's start making plans around them Maybe we can dive right in As it turns out, the resource storage level two is uh, quite a significant build and requires a lot of planks. And uh, that wasn't something I anticipated or took with me. So I just uh, came out to the town here. I'm going to see, do we have any planks in here? Doesn't look like we do. Uh, do we at least have some, some logs? I guess we don't. I know that some workers at the moment do need tools, and that's probably why we don't have any logs here. So yeah, I dropped the ball a bit on that one. What we'll do now then, we'll go and get a load of logs and turn them into planks and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, once that's done, oh, I just noticed something. Our tree of beginnings has regrown. <laughs> so this was something that we tested in a previous episode. We left the tree here. It has finally regrown, guys, in all its glory. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so they do indeed regrow uh, when you leave the stumps, which is good to know. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get the planks, then we'll finish the time lapse of that build. Apologies for interrupting it midway through, but just uh, keeping you guys posted with the progress as things actually happen in real time. 
We are now the proud owners of a resource storage level 2, and it's a real shame that it's raining once again. We've been unlucky with that in this episode, because it looks really beautiful with the uh, background there with the waterfall, and I purposely left a few trees here that kind of border it in quite nicely. Um, but the beauty of it isn't uh, as important as its functionality, which is what we built it for, of course. So if we come inside here and open this up, you'll see a couple of things. First of all, 4,000 kilograms, which is double the level 1 storage, so that in itself is amazing but also the fact that we have all this stuff here. So we can access all of this stuff now in our new town. And obviously that's just gonna make it very simple to get things from our old town over here to our new town and start building up pretty quickly. So that's obviously the reason for building this as the first building and the start of the uh, new town. As I say, this town is gonna be a bit of a slower development in progress that we've run in the background, but we made a nice start on it today, finding the location and getting that done. I'm pretty happy with that. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the support I've had on this series. Uh, way, way more than I, I expected in, in so many ways, not just in terms of views and comments and stuff, but all of the super chats, the members that have joined and stuff like that. Um, just thank you so much. Um, I wanted to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and, and again thank you all for being here in today's video and throughout the series. Uh, I will take a little bit of time off over Christmas, so probably for the next few days there won't be any videos, but I just want to reassure everybody I'm far from done with this series um, or with any of the other content that I'm making for that matter. Um, but you know, I figured I'd spend some time with family and just take some downtime and stuff like that. I've loved putting out a video every day. Um, it, funnily enough, I, I actually was like just wanting to do a series like this more for fun than anything else. So that's why I think uh, the um, the fact that it's been doing so well and has received so much support has been such a surprise. Um, but it's twofold. I'm really enjoying making the content and also feel I don't want to let you guys down because you've been so good to me through it. And I, and I do genuinely appreciate that. So that just entails for me, the, you know, to, to keep making more content is the best I can do to keep giving you guys hopefully what you want. Um, so yeah, just rest assured it's coming back. As I say, have a great Christmas or whatever you might celebrate in your part of the world. Have a fantastic new year. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the new year. Next year should be a big one for me. I should hit 100,000 subscribers next year. Super excited for all of that. Um, let me know. What are you hoping to get for Christmas? What do you do for Christmas? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys again real soon.